everyone. Um, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make colored roots. Um, I made a um, colored roots for my standard poodle puppy back in May and everybody loved it. He was tender green and navy blue. So I'm just going to show you guys the process that I did to use that and this is all Opaz. Um, they're my favorite brand of color to be honest. Alright, so got my gloves here. Can't have way too many because I break these like constantly, if you can tell. Um, I also did get a spray bottle full of warm water so it doesn't close the cuticle um, on the hair if you don't want cold water, warm water, just to help with the frizz because the technique that I'm using, you really kind of have to be precise um, and really get down to the root so that way you're not making a mess everywhere then you're gonna get your peekaboo effect by not spilling color everywhere else. Um, actually, we're gonna start with his ears to get wrapped up. Just like a little bedlington here. I'm going to take some of the isolation cream by Opaz. That way I don't get it everywhere because you know it's bound to happen, especially when you have a dog that shakes. Um, and this is all wool, so after I can wash this, it's not a problem because it's all real hair. Alright, so I'm starting with the navy blue. Super pretty. And I'm just going to get the roots out here so that you don't see any of the green. Um, so if you're doing like a poodle top knot, all of this is going to be covered. Just very slow motion. Some summer frizz going. All right, and then I'm just gonna blend this all in with my hands. Right. And we'll lay that down. And I'm just going to switch so that way I don't get the blue color everywhere because otherwise you're going to have start green and a whole bunch of different colors you probably don't want. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me during the way. I have Jen behind the camera right now so she can tell me whatever's going on. All right. So this is kind of like line brushing. Um, you just want to get it really, really tight down to the skin, so we're just going to say this is the dog's head. And then instead of doing strokes, you're going to do a pushing motion. And just really saturate the root. I 
then you're gonna take your comb. You're gonna get teeny tiny little bits of pieces of the hair. You don't wanna grab too much because otherwise you're not gonna get an even amount with the roots. So when you do it, you should still see a little bit of green right in here. And then you're just gonna spread it really nice and tight and then do the same exact thing. And then you'll go back in with your blue and then you can just do this and then you can just lay it so it's not going to blend in with the other one and you can definitely do the roots first and then um, another day go in with the blue or whatever color that it is that you want to do just because it does take a little bit of time And that's kind of what I did with my poodle because it was about six hours, I think, in total. So we did three hours for the roots and then another three hours to apply the secondary color. All right. Then we're just gonna do the exact same thing. Take a little bit, comb it all down. Um, when you're doing this, I do recommend doing a darker color and a lighter color so that way you don't see this. You can definitely do it so that you can see it. Um, it's just really a preference for what you're doing, but if you want to really get that hidden effect, um, you want a darker color so that this lighter color in the middle doesn't really blend with the outside. And then we're going to take all this because this is going to be on the outside of this guy's hairdo and we're going to make that all blue as well. So it's pretty simple. It's kind of just like line brushing basically. Um, it's not as complicated as you think. Pretty much if you have an idea, just go for it. It's the only way you really learn with color. So. And then later on, I'll be posting the finished product in the comments, probably like Sunday. And you can kind of see how this really worked. Any questions? Not yet. All right, well, that's pretty simple then. They're so much fun. <laughs> they are pretty cool. Not 
Too many gloves. <laughs> There's like a million over here. It's getting frizzy up. It's pretty humid today, so. You can definitely just take a comb and make sure you've gotten it all the way through. Can't be too aggressive with this guy. found if you don't really push down and let it saturate for a minute um, you kind of get all these random little hairs caught up in the dye and then it just makes an absolute mess okay so you have two questions yes. um, Lonnie wants to know how long have you been creative grooming um, I've been creative grooming not too too long I think I started when I started at a furry affair um, they introduced it to me in like my first year there and I decided I'm going to color my entire husky and see what happens and it was not very pretty but you know that's the whole thing you trial and error um so four years so yeah probably about three or four on and off and I just got my standard poodle so he's gonna get the brunt of the entire thing so I would just say you know if you ever have any questions reach out to people like the opas they're really really friendly um the creative groomers association is really awesome Go to Intergroom. They have the creative um, competition. Super cool. And Amber is asking, are you pressing down to saturate it? Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. So you're probably going to stain the skin a little bit, um, but that's totally fine because I think after a week it grew out enough where it wasn't on his skin anymore. Um, because when I just, I'll just show you. Because if I'm just going to do this, you see how it kind of starts going everywhere? Because then you're going to actually end up getting dye into the hairs that you want to be blue. And then it's just a pain. And this way you're getting it as even as possible. And it's super, super bright at the root. Katie says hi. Hi, Katie. As well as Mandy. Who? Mandy. Oh, hi, Mandy. with her pink Pomeranian. Mm -hmm. And then once you first get like the first layer, it's so much easier and then you really kind of get into a groove because you don't have to worry so much about the face. And I'll say this is definitely my first time working with one of these um, wool Pets. I can't remember what the name is. Eh, doesn't matter. Um, but it's super fun. I've never ever had this kind of experience. You get it out of the bag and you kind of have to demat it and really comb through it and then you pop its eyes in and it's good to go. And then you can just have so much fun with it. Um, you've seen a lot of the Asian fusion with this. I kind of did like a little rock and bedling tin because I think it would be really cool with what we're doing. Dyeable wood wool head wig from Opos. Ah, thank you. You're welcome. That's from Lynn. I have such a horrible time remembering things. I trip over my words because I'm blonde. I just colored my hair so no one can see. Oh, well, they're there at the roots. <laughs> If you were to be doing this on, say, like, 
poodle legs. The best way to do this is actually to do it vertically, so up their leg, and I would spread their hair this way, and then kind of um, open it, just because it's long and cylindrical. I tried going the other way, and it was it was a total fail. How long did it take you to do your standard poodle pup? Um, I believe it was a total of six hours. Um, it was also a lot of treating, so I got a super high reward treat for him. We used um, green tripe cubes, so it was kind of off and on praise and having him just sit and process and then trying to figure out <laughs> what the best way to do this was because at first I was just like we're just gonna go for it and then I had really no idea what I was doing until you kind of find a groove and then I was like this is what works. You did it in two steps though. You did the green yes. first and then the blue yes. in another so, setting. The first night we did the tender green then I realized I didn't have enough blue. I think I used like six. I think it was six of the navy blue um, to do the rest of him. Um, and you don't need as much dye for the roots. And it actually probably would help you too if you do it in two, just so that way you get this washed out first and then you don't have to worry about running. But I kind of like it when there's an ombre effect, so I guess whatever it is that you're trying to go for. Francesca. You should show them her. She's so cute. <laughs> and then tell everybody the noise you're making. Yeah. Sad stories. Once I put down the tender green, if I got a little bit of blue in here, it wasn't a huge deal um, because it kind of just washed out. I don't know if I was just lucky, but I feel like it was kind of designed that way. Um, I wouldn't, you know, go in and push over it, but it definitely helped if I, you know, splattered a tiny bit in here. It wasn't a big deal. Sissy is watching. Oh yeah. Very intently. She's another victim of the color. She just wishes we had food right now. She doesn't care about anything else. What is your favorite creative groom you've ever seen? Oh my god, that's tough. <laughs> um, I don't know. I've been seeing a lot of really cool ones on Opas right now where people are just using their imagination to create everything and anything. I don't know if I even have a favorite. Um, I definitely would like to learn how to sculpt things when people do flowers and fish and that is like amazing. So um, I don't really think I have a favorite. That's, that's a really tough one. Now this is starting to really get, yep, see I just goobered right there, it's probably not going to even be a big deal. 
And that's the awesome thing about colored roots too, is that no one can tell. Like, um, there were a couple areas on my poodle that I wasn't super happy with because I was just figuring it all out. Um, but when he ran around and the wind blew, you couldn't tell at all. So this is super forgiving, even though it's kind of technical, it's a really good place to start when you're doing color. I think I did a lot of ombres when I very first started learning how to do color. Do you want me to keep going, Carrie? <laughs> Rebel. She has trouble. When I go to go rinse this guy, I'm just going to use really cool water so that way it doesn't come all out. It shouldn't, um, but it gives you a much more vibrant effect if you just use cool water instead of warm water. Like if it was a client, I'd probably use warm water and soap just to make sure it didn't bleed everywhere. But because um, a lot of our clients are very active and like to go out in the rain. Uh, what is your favorite permanent Opaz dye color? Um, I'm personally a fan of purple, so I'd have to say Mystic Purple and definitely the Adorable Pink. Um, and hmm, is it Hawaiian Blue? I think I don't know. We have a whole cabinet. Let's look. Um, and then somebody else is asking, what are you using to cover your table? Oh, also, any tricks question. in not staining the tub? Um, not staining the tub. It depends on what kind of tub you have, I think. Sorry, I think I actually need to like, here possibly. I know, I, I brought some of the blue home the other day. I don't remember. It's the permanent blue, but when you put the blue and the pink together, it makes this really pretty purple as well. That's actually what I did with Sissy. Um, is she here? Sissy or has left. She left the building. All right, but that's Sorry. okay. Um... Where did you get the table covers from? Um, they're from, I'd have to look up her name. Innocent Blue, I think is what Innocent they want. Innocent Blue, yep. yes. Um, this is someone that makes them in one of the groomer barter pages for the table covers. Um, her name is Leslie. Uh, she makes the bandanas for us too. Oh yeah, they're sewn at the edges. I'll have to find that out and get back to you. But yeah. these are awesome. We use these for drying on the drying tables as well. Um, and then for staining the tub, what kind of tub do you have? You shall find out. Because if it's a stainless steel, I don't think I've ever had any issues with it. Usually when they like splatter and shake, I, we just rinse it right down and it doesn't do anything. Unless you're doing it at home, then that's a whole other thing.
just going to really massage this through. Fiberglass tub, so like a regular yeah. tub at home. So I would, I'd probably put like soap on the walls where you think it's going to splash and make sure you're covering up your dog once you're done with the dye. Um, you can actually teach them to, a lot of the creative groomers teach their dogs not to shake while they're in the tub. Um, and that can come in handy, so if you just say no shake or whatever and then you reward them when they're not shaking, it might actually help them be distracted. Um, but then after that, you should be able to rinse it down. Do you have a brush size preference in the Opaz brushes? Not really. I think it depends on the surface area. I'm using these ones just because this is a much smaller. So if you're using a smaller dog, um, you definitely would want the smaller ones so that you have more control in the area. Uh, I have this one also. This is what I used on my poodle to get his roots done um, because I could easily just flip and flop it. So I went like that and it just got him completely done. Um, but where this is kind of new for me, I want to have a little bit more control. And they're very, very nice. They sent these to me and they are awesome. Super soft. And I like that you can actually see the color on them like versus the black ones. She's trying to play with us. <laughs> she is trying to play. She's got her ball. She's oh, demanding. I just made a whoops. That's okay. You just made a whoops? I totally put this Oh, one she the... dipped the wrong brush. Good thing I have an extra. See, this is what happens when you have really cute dogs around. You just get so distracted. They're so cute. So, for the table covers, um, hang mm -hmm. on. This is who? A go. bow and beyond. Enterprises. I think they're called fit to be dried table covers. Three different size brushes and you can choose by your demand. Mm -hmm. is what they're telling us. Opaz is great. They have every tool imaginable that you would need. Oh my gosh. You go there and you're trying like not to spend all your money in one place. But we do. Yeah we do. Um, did you try a test spot on your poodle before fully dying? Or did you just go for it? Nah, I'm, I just totally went for it. I know you're not supposed to, but I'm way more of a just do it, see what happens, it's hair, you can shave it off kind of person. And um, like I said, if you ever have an idea and you're feeling kind of weird about it, um, and you know, you don't have a show poodle where it took you two years to grow it out, say just do it. Why not? Because you might love it. The first time I did this, um, where I didn't have enough of the blue that I wanted, I actually ended up making this weird, really cool marble look to him, and then I just went back over it and did the navy blue, and it came out the same, so. Opaz has a ton of tutorial videos too on their website and um, I believe on their Facebook page that you can go ahead and check out so you can do a bunch of different things. Oh, she's stealing the cookies. Frankie, hey. No cookies. She keeps going at it. Bad dog. She just likes them. They're delicious. It looks so cool, Brett. Thanks. It's also my first time working with one of these, so it's definitely a little bit different than actual dog hair. Um, I think what works best is if I went in with a slicker brush and then you just comb it out with probably a wide tooth comb and then do the fine tooth to prep this. They might actually have other tricks that you can use, but that's what worked for me to start this whole thing.
and then the spray bottle because it gets a little bit frizzy, but it doesn't care. It holds a really nice shape though. I'm just putting some blue breaks into this because um, I'm gonna actually be putting it into like a spiked mohawk, so I'm just doing something different, but. Lonnie says, sorry, trying to come up with good questions to help new creative groomers. Not a problem. I'm not great with questions myself, so it's all good. long do you think it took you to prep the dog wig? That's a good question. Maybe like 30, 45 minutes, I think, possibly. Yeah, it wasn't long. Um, it's a lot easier when you don't have a wiggling dog or nails to do or any of that. So, um, I just put the wig on. It's really tight um, fit in the back where it has two snaps that you use to wrap it around the actual dog head. And then I just went with a slicker brush and combed it and it's actually fine if you rip at it a little bit. It didn't do anything to it other than get rid of the loose knots unlike some other ones that I've used um, where it completely destroys it. This one didn't care. Um, and then I cut the slit where the eyes and the nose go and I popped it in which takes a little bit of muscling um, but it holds it in place and then I just did my design. How would you be able to do this on a wiggly dog? <laughs> well, I would consider my puppy to be a little bit wiggly, but um, if it was, you know, you just use your discretion. If there's a dog that's, you know, obviously stressed out, you don't want to do that. Um, if they're being really, really crazy, probably not. But that's why you can do something small and fun the first time they come in, and then you can see how they do for that and then see if they'll be able to do this. Like my dog, I already knew his limitations, so. Now that you've done a head wig, would you do a full body dog wig? Yeah, probably, <laughs> definitely. Game on, challenge accepted. Oh, yes. Actually, I think we did at one point, but um, I just never got to it, and then people were thinking it was actually a real dog, and we had to take him down. They thought we were neglecting the dogs here. <laughs> But I actually didn't use one of the Opal ones, I don't think. Where did we get the other one? Was I it in Opal's? No. Uh, it definitely wasn't in Opal's, but that's the one that actually started breaking You're a little asking bit. questions I don't have the answer well, to. Well, you know I try. Sorry. It's all good. We don't want to say another brand anyway. No. I mean, I don't, I don't like it as much anyway. is the best. Anyway. This wig is awesome. So I think for introducing puppies and stuff, maybe ears or tail, see how they do. Yeah, definitely. Because we all know the ears and the tail are probably where they're gonna be the most uh, naughty for, because it's sensitive, you know. So we're gonna get 
some of this because it's on the outside. How long do you leave the dye on the dog's coat before washing? Um, I kind of go overkill with it just because I really want to make sure it's in there, especially if you're doing this much work. Um, Opaz recommends 20 to 30 minutes, I believe, so I usually go for about 45 to an hour, but it also depends on um, your dog, what they can handle. If you're just doing something simple like the ears, then I would say just 25 to 30 minutes would just be fine. There's Sissy. She's <laughs> next to you. She now you mix color on her, right? Yeah, I so I took the adorable pink and then I took the innocent blue and I just blended them together with a comb and it made that pretty little purple in the middle there. Nice. Yeah. She's also a good girl. She'll do anything for a treat. <laughs> peekabooing through. Yeah. So then you don't need as much dye actually. So I wonder if I can see what's going on here so far. Alright, so see this is kind of all that's processing. So you want to lift this up and make sure you're really, I can't see the front obviously. So you just want to work that all in with your fingers, but it's all going to be in there. It's a little sticky. But none of it is getting in the way of the green. What is your favorite process of the coloring? Mine is drying with the Velocity Dryer. Oh, that's fun, yeah. Um, I don't know, it's very relaxing, but I think I'm kind of with you there. Once you see it all rinsed off, that's fun too, actually, when all the color runs off into the tub. That is amazing. Um, and then definitely the velocity, because then you get to see your finished product come to life, and it's just everywhere. Color is life. I'm going to try to get a video of me drying this with the velocity dryer actually so you can kind of see um, what happens if your dog is running in the wind and you just see the peekaboo. Almost there. So if I were to take all of this then you wouldn't actually get this part of where the roots are so that's why we're doing it in such small sections and where you can actually see the tender green coming through still Alright, what color should I do this guy's beard and ears, guys? Oh. Is it harder to color long hair or short hair? That's kind of tricky. I know, that is a hard one. I feel like short hair is actually harder because a lot of the short hair dogs are your dogs with coarser coat, so it actually sheds out a lot faster. Um, and you have to make sure you're really saturating it right down to the skin. 
um, one of our trainer's dogs, Phoenix, that I started learning how to do designs on and coloring. The first time I did it, when I rinsed it all out, it was really patchy. Um, so I had to really make sure I was getting every single layer of her coat and really saturating it and massaging it in with uh, my fingers. And whereas a dog like this, it kind of holds better. You can see what's going on. Um, and it really takes to the color a little bit better. But I will say, I think that Opaz has chalks and pens that work awesome on short haired dogs. Um, like your American Staffshire Terriers, Bulldogs, Frenchies. And those work a lot easier if you're just trying to do something quick for a client. Have you done color on a black dog with their color lift? I'm trying to think if I have or not. I think you have. I have. Yeah, Jen did that with her standard poodle Daphne, and it was super pretty. Um, I've used the color lift before. I like that because it did not destroy my dog's hair, and it lifted it so it was like a pastel because she's a husky, so I can't shave her tail off. Um, but Jen lifted her ears and then did a bright pink. It was really pretty. Did you have any comments about that since you did it? Um, it worked super well. It lifts very nicely. Um, and it, her hair was super healthy after. Like I was concerned that it would damage her hair. But it lifted it really, really well. And then I was able to color over. And it was, it was fairly simple and quick, easy process. Yeah. I would love to get my hands on a black dog possibly going to be doing a German Shepherd with that and then I'll let you know. That's my favorite creative personally <laughs> is a black poodle that's been lifted and then colored like hot pink or purple. Really... He's kind of blind right now guys. <laughs> We're getting there. We're almost there. I feel like Picasso over here. <laughs> right. This is this little guy's hole over here where I buttoned him up. I don't know if you can even see it, but this is kind of like where the back is. Let's see if I can find it. See, there's a little button right there and then a button right there. So it's pretty easy, you just stretch it over, pulls her on up. It's really good though, because the dog head underneath, because um, it is made of plastic, uh, the color washed right off of it when I did my test run.
So this is what happens. This is what I'm using for the roots, and then this is what I'm using for the rest of the dog. So you definitely, if you're gonna do this, order more for the color that you're going to do on the outside, and then you probably need a little bit less for the roots. Um, these were pretty much even when I first started out. What do you find has to be the most challenging part of dyeing the fur or hair? Um, different textures is definitely the hardest part. If you're working with a new kind of texture for a dog, um, you don't really know exactly what's going to happen until you're done rinsing. And sometimes it can be a little bit frustrating because you're not really sure um, what it is that you did and what you have to do for next time to really make it work. So that's what I said. You just kind of have to have fun with it and trial and error. I think that's the best thing about creative is that there's really no right or wrong. Even if you mess up, no one's going to know because it's art. What got you started in creative grooming? Um, just being here, actually. Um, I started corporate and then I found Jen and they were doing some really fun stuff with their dogs for um, just everyday grooming. And I really wanted to try that because I would never seen that before. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen. And that's when I decided to put my husky in the tub with a lot of purple. And then once um, they introduced me to Intergroom, I got even more crazy because they do the grooming competitions and those guys, they are like absolute experts in what they do. I hope to get that good one day. Um, and it just really makes you start thinking about all these ideas that you want to put down on a dog. And it's great because you can actually use these to do that because it's kind of hard sometimes to find a dog that you can do creative with. Um, but you can even start small. It doesn't have to be color. You can go and do extensions, accessories, booty bling. I mean, there's a whole list of different kind of creative styles. I just prefer color because it's fun and vibrant. Any recommendations on the uh, ears and the face? Not yet. Darn, guys. She wants recommendations on what color for the ears and the face. Somebody's asking, well, she's giving a whole list of questions, like yeah. helpful questions for new groomers. Um, what brands to use, where to start, how long do you leave it on, how do you rinse it off? Obviously, Opaz yeah. is the brand. I mean, I like that. Where, where to start for getting into creative? Where to start? Like, well, I would start with something small. So, I would start with um, maybe some color crayons and maybe chalk and see how that holds on dogs. Um, start really getting your fine tuning skills um, with small patterns and shapes. Or you can just go for it, because that's what I do. <laughs> um, I like the Opaz brand because you can mix up the different colors to get other colors, and they are made to be mixed. So you don't have to just stick with one color. We have a vote for purple. Purple. All and right. then we have a vote for innocent blue for the okay. ears. Purple ears, definitely. <laughs> kind of partial to the purple, but. Why not both? <laughs> Why not? Exactly. Let's do it.
purple ears, face yellow. Okay. Do we have yellow? We're not sure we have yellow. I think yellow. we do, actually. I okay. just used some the other night. Okay. I think we've got quite a bit of it covered. <laughs> She's trying to play with her ball. Mm -hmm. uh, what were some of the other questions on there? I totally forgot. Um, how do you rinse it off? How long do you leave it on? So, I think for leaving it on, it really kind of depends on what you have for a dog. But I would say about half hour is probably the best bet. Um... And for rinsing, I just use cool water. I usually shampoo the dog's face first and tilt their head back so that way it doesn't get into their eyes. Um, I've never really had that issue before with it. It's super gentle, honestly. And then I just use a really light shampoo and then cool rinse again, conditioner. Anything that really seals the hair um, is your best bet. How do you get it to not run onto another color or onto non-colored hair? Um, so I, at first I use the um, Opaz Isolation Cream. It's really thick and tacky um, and it prevents anything from getting onto the white hair. So once you go to wash them off, it, you don't have anything there at all. Um, and then not getting it everywhere, that's really kind of just it comes with time. Um, and lots of practice and knowing what your dye is going to do, how much dye you need for everything that you're doing. Say I didn't like the color and wanted to change it to a different color, what would you recommend? Use semi-permanent. I would not go with permanent. Permanent. I can't talk. Permanent. <laughs> permanent. Um, for your first time, semi-permanent tends to wash out in about eight washes um, or less, just like I said, depending on texture. Um, and then you can also use the lifting, which helps to get rid of some of that color. That's what I did for my Husky when I was getting sick of looking at her color because I switch it a lot. Um, and that really helped for me to color over it. Or you can just shave it out if you have a dog that you can shave it with. Do you dye on clean or dirty hair? Um, every day today basis I do do it on dirty hair I wouldn't use it on, like our clients are on a regular schedule though so it's not disgusting filthy if they are covered in a lot of dirt then I definitely would wash that first um, so that you get a more vibrant color they recommend that you do wash your dog first but just as far as time goes I feel like this color is over it no problem um, like I said just make sure the dog hasn't been you know not groomed in a year um, what's in the spray bottle? That's just warm water so that way I can keep the dog's hair from frizzing everywhere because um, once it gets a little bit frizzy it can be harder to control my dye and it gets stuck in there. And then what sizes um, does the dye come in? I think, I think those just are our largest one. ones so uh, 5.3 ounces which is on it it's more than enough. You it spreads very well. Um, they also have color packs, I believe, where you can get a pretty good deal and get all of the colors. Yeah, they have several starter packs. That's yeah. how I got started, which is awesome. So if you can't choose on a color, you just get the whole thing.
this is pretty much the last bit of it, you guys. So that is going to be blue. It is. This is all going to get blued. I'm probably just going to run it through with my fingertips. Um, for some of the more difficult areas, I just kind of massaged it on through and twisted it on my poodle. So he had like some spikes going on, but I find it works really good for the ends of the hair. Once you're all done, massage it all the way through so that you get way more of an even um, finish to it. Have you used the Opa shampoo? Um, and then somebody is questioning if they mean the funky color shampoos, Lynn is asking. Um, I haven't used their actual shampoo shampoo. Um, I do have all of their funky color shampoos though, and I use that on my pool. It's super fun. Uh, it's very vibrant in the tub, and then it rinses out into this beautiful pastel color. Um, and it's very, very gentle. The smell is amazing. And um, I've used their LPP, I think. Let me just double check, because I always mess it up. Um, their PPT Hair Restorative Treatment. Um, with their LPP Hair Restorative Treatment. Um, use those together for the best results. Yeah, we used that on a Pomeranian that was disgusting. Like his hair was trash, basically. Um, and the first time I used it, he felt like an actual Pomeranian again, and we got his undercoat out, and he was brushable. Um, it was very shiny and smooth, which is amazing because I haven't actually found anything that works on him, and we use a lot of different kinds of products. So um, I was really impressed by that. I kind of wish that they would actually make a perfume that smells like this because it's beautiful. <laughs> You're just going to catch me huffing it. How often do you color your poodle? Hmm. Well, <laughs> I think in three months, I went to like three or four different hairstyles with him. Um, now I'm just going to grow him out into a big continental. He's got um, jet black top knot and palms and the rest of them shaved down. So it was a sad day when I took all this color off of him, but it looked really cool coming off as well. So there you go. So if I'm ripping this apart after all the work that I did, you can see the green that's in there. I'm just going to work it through. Basically, while your dog is sitting, um, you can just be doing this, massaging it on through, because that's going to help it um, get into the hair a lot better. And where I goobered right here up front, that's where all of the um, isolation cream is. It's going to wash right out. So that's pretty much it. Are you going to put the ear color on the ears? Yes, I can do that now, for sure. All right, so I think we decided on purple ears. Purple, and we're going to do a blue on one of them, and then yellow face. Nice. Let's do it.
I think in the second drawer you have the tray to do all the different colors, yes, if that helps. Also from Opaz. Of course. What else? You sure you really shake these really nice and good? Off topic, what kind of dog is that? Uh, the puppy running <laughs> around on the floor is a mini bull terrier mix. Mom is a mini bull terrier and dad is who knows what. A Heinz 57. Yes. Um, how do you handle negative comments about colored dogs? Oh, good That's one. That's a good one. It's so frustrating and it's really difficult. Um, it depends on the situation. If it's on Facebook, honestly, I think the best way to approach it is more of an educative perspective not so much as bashing somebody else for their beliefs um if they don't like it it's not my problem it's not their dog and it isn't their owner so if they don't like it oh well they can just keep walking and we'll go about our way just keep the peace but i try to educate as much as i can and show them the facts versus you know emotions i think also letting them know how much extra attention the dog gets Positive attention, for the most part, is helpful. All the time. Everybody, if you have a shy dog, which we discovered because I actually put a bow tie and a tuxedo on my boss's um, pit mix, he's not a big fan of strangers just because he had a really rough start in life. Um, everyone was like, oh my goodness, I have to come and see your dog. And he wasn't the biggest fan of that. So, um... <laughs> If you have a dog that's very social, they're going to love the attention. Like my poodle, he is an attention you know what. So, um, color is a great way for people to really kind of interact with dogs. Especially if you have, um, say, a therapy dog and you color your dog and they're going into a hospital with sick kids. They're going to absolutely light up more so than if they were to just see, you know. A dog is cool, but a colored dog is magical. Have you tried opaws in your own hair? I haven't yet, but I've considered it. Definitely consider that. Um, my hairdresser would probably kill me though. Yeah. These brushes are rinsing off so easily. Opaws brushes for the win. Yeah. I didn't wash these off perfectly, but they're going to do the job. I'm starting with innocent blue. Yes. We'll do that. Oh, so They've had you. several groomers try the products on human hair and they love the results. Not surprised. Maybe I should actually get my hairdresser to use this on me for next time. I'll just bring it in. <laughs> sure she would love that. You can probably get a discount. I might. <laughs> I'm going to have to try it on my own hair. LOL. You have to post the pictures after, though, because I want to see that. And there's nothing better than matching your dog's color. Next color. I think I like that blue a lot. Yeah, that blue is very pretty. Next. Which one is this? This one's the adorable pink. Oh, we oh, were going purple. 
Oh, you're right. We were going purple. Well, now you're stuck with pink. Oh, not necessarily. Oh, dear. <laughs> Let me mix. Hang on. See, I'm going to show you. This is how awesome these things are. You can actually mix these colors to get what you want. So what are you mixing? Um, I actually took the Hawaiian blue this time, and I'm going to do it with the adorable pink. Just make sure you mix it super, super well. Look at how pretty that is. That is my favorite already. It's pretty close to Mystic Purple, I would say. Someone's got to keep me on track here. I don't remember. Oh, anything. I like that. I like that purple a lot. This is pretty much the color of my husky right now. Jen's favorite color is also purple. We're kind of partial here, guys. actually going to go really well, I think, with the rest of it. This guy's face is quite thick, so I'm going to have to massage this in after. Very compliant puppy. Mm -hmm. He's such a good boy. What are you gonna name him? Um, let's call him Max. Max, <laughs> how original. I know, I thought so. How about Tito? We like the Titos. Do you do any creative sculpting or just dyeing? Um, right now, I've just been doing dye. Um, I haven't gotten into sculpting yet. I do definitely want to learn that. They have color pads that I think I'm going to try that on. And my poodle, of course. But I probably won't add color when I do some sculpting stuff on him. Do you need more yellow? Oh, my. This guy is thick. See if we can brush that through. Let me clip this guy's hair back. There we go. Probably should be what was gloves. the creative grooming group you mentioned earlier? Um, creative Groomers Association. And they have a Facebook group, right? Yes. That is the name, I believe. All right. So, yep, that's it in a nutshell. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Um, this is all Opa's stuff that I was using. Um, it was the tender green and navy blue. 
And then we did the innocent blue and Hawaiian blue mixed with the adorable pink to get the purple and then their yellow. And we'll post afters. Yes, we'll in the post comments. afters in the comments. Um, it'll probably take me a couple of days, but it's gonna happen. We'll see how it turns out. Thanks, guys.